Okay, folks, today I want to review for you the TerraMaster NAS or Network Attached Server. Um, currently, I use a network attached server, the TerraMaster. It has two C gates in it. Both C gates are two terabytes. I have them run in RAID 0, therefore, it thinks it's one large hard drive and works twice as fast because it puts half of the information on one hard drive and half on the other hard drive. So it thinks it runs twice as fast. It's kind of like a trick. Um, People have been raiding for years. That's what they kind of use mostly for speed. So this is what I am using. Um, it has an Intel Duo in it, and um, I upgraded it to four gigs of RAM. So it runs pretty fast. It, it, it does its encoding. I use Plex software. If you notice Plex, go to Plex's website, download their software, or, and I have used in the past, MB. You can use MB software as well. Both of them work great. Uh, you can either buy the lifetime license. They, they run anywhere between $99 to $120 for the lifetime license. You can pay for it every month. They usually run about $5 a month in order to pay for it. The reason why you need to pay for it if you want to use a network, network attached server as a recording capability is so you can actually get the guide to come on the screen and in that guide you can tell it what you want to record now you don't have to do this if you don't want to use it for the guide purposes if you want to use it solely for movies or other things that you've converted to digital format in order to watch it as if it was say netflix or something like that you can do that i did that for a long time I wanted to hook up independent tune. I have hooked up to my coax cable, which is hooked up to an antenna inside of my attic. And this is the actual antenna I have hooked up inside of the attic. Works great. I pick up, I think, I think I have 61 channels right now. They're made by silicone dust and they're labeled HD Home Run. Now I have six tuners. That's four and two. I have six tuners. And the reason why I have six tuners is because I like well, I like a little bit of overkill, but I like to make sure I have enough tuners for everything. For example, let's say I'm recording Manifest, I'm recording Last Man Standing, and I'm also recording The Rookie all at the same time because they all come on, let's say, at 8 o'clock. And they're all being recorded at the same time. If I wanted to watch an additional show on network television, I would have to wait until one of the recordings is done. But if I wanted to watch it with my current setup, that means I would be using four tuners. Now I have two additional tuners in reserve. So if I want to record two additional shows, meaning four shows at the same time or five shows at the same time, and I wanted to watch a show, I could do it. I'm kind of like a Boy Scout in this case. I like to make sure that I am uh, running a little bit more than I need or overkill. Okay, folks, like I told you, I am currently using Plex software on my TerraMaster NAS or Network Attached Server. When you open it up, it gives you choices of menus when you do the, for the initial setup. But when you open it up, I have it right here where it says continue watching. These are the shows that I was watching, um, old uh, Western movie, a Boston Legal, Manifest. Um, it tells me what the most recent recordings were. And um, it tells me what the most recently viewed videos um, in those recordings were. Um, I have it. I have my own playlist made here. Playlist for the movies. Those are all my DVDs that I have converted to digital format for my personal use, not for commercial use, for my personal use. And then these are recorded from television, the antenna channels, and these are series. Those are the movies recorded from television. And these are series recorded from television. And then I also have a workout. These are old workouts that my wife likes to use. She likes to go out in the garage and do her workouts from time to time. Um, kind of let me give you an idea what it looks like when I go to guide. When I go to guide and it loads up, this is what it looks like. Currently I have these shows, the ones that are in the light gray. All the ones that are in the dark gray are the, the obviously the shows that are going to be coming up. Let's say I wanted to record Bye Bye Birdie. I'm going to click on the outside, not the record, but on the outside and it tells me what it is. I, you know, I kind of read it. I say, hey, look, this sounds pretty good. I want to go ahead and hit record and it's going to ask me where I want to record it at. It's a movie. It knows this. It's pretty intelligent. 
And it says, do you want to record in recorded TV movies? Yes, let's go ahead and record it there. And I hit record and it is going to record it there. But let's say I wanted to record a series. How about let's record a series like um, Myth Hunters. I'm going to record Myth Hunters, right? It'll ask me immediately, do you want to record this one episode? Or you want to record all the episodes? Do you want to record in TV series? Yes, I want to record in TV series. I can even go into this further and tell it I want to re uh, replace lower resolution. So if a higher resolution comes on at a later time, and most everything's in HD now, I can do that. Or do I want to go ahead and save partial recordings? No, I want full recordings. I want the entire episode. Do I want it to start one minute before and one minute after? No, I want to do five and five or three and three, what have you. Uh, do I want to limit to just that channel? Do I want to limit to that particular airing time? And this is the most important thing. Um, use DVR settings. What this is going to do is it's going to attempt to remove all the commercials from the TV show. And it does a pretty good job. It doesn't do a great job, but it does a good enough job to go ahead and play straight through it. You'll see a little glitch when it comes to the, um, the dropping out of the commercials or the erasing of the commercials. But um, that's pretty much how Plex works. And MB is very similar. Now this is again what we're looking at here is on the computer. But MB works pretty darn similar. Now as far as using Plex or MB on the television, the living room, I have both a Roku and the all new Amazon Fire TV 4K. And I also have the Roku Ultra, which is the highest end. I kind of like using the Amazon TV 4K more simply because the Amazon TV is compatible with the menu system on both Plex and MB. The Roku is only able to use the MB app currently at this time since they haven't updated um, Plex in order to work with MB. I'm sorry, Plex in order to work with Roku as far as this menu system goes. This grid, at least. Now, it'll still bring up a menu system, but it won't bring it up in this grid. But most all of us are used to the grid format, and this is what we like. So this is the reason why I actually use my Amazon 4K. Although the Amazon 4K is a little smoother to me, I believe it's a little smoother. Um, it, the remote seems to work a lot better and it feels better in the hands. So I kind of recommend either one of them, but the one I recommend the most is the Amazon 4K. Seems to work pretty darn smooth for me. So anyway, I just wanted to bring this to your attention. If anybody was interested in hooking up a network attached server, please comment down below and click that little bell. Make sure that you subscribe and that way you will be notified of any videos that I make in the future. And also follow me on Twitter. And until next time, again, if you can do it yourself, do it yourself and save a few bucks.